So I collect Soviet pamphlets primarily from the 1920s to the 1950s. And when it comes to pamphlets created for the Western world in the English language to bring understanding, solidarity, and to dispel misinformation or to share information from the Soviets to the Western world, um, it did really start to fizzle out in the 1950s for a myriad of reasons. And as you know, I scan my personal collection with my scanner back here, and I put them up on my website as PDFs free for anyone to look at and learn from. And I get a lot of questions on where I source them. Now, I just got a package right here in the mail because I bid on a lot of eight pamphlets. It said pamphlets about Stalin and the Soviet Union, and I didn't have much more information than that. So it could be a dud. It could be something really great. And how much did I pay for eight pamphlets about Stalin? Um, $15, including shipping, which is really not that much. Bidding on lots, especially if you know that there's likely something in there that you actually want, is a really good way to obtain stuff like that. So let's look at this and see what I got in my lot of eight pamphlets about Stalin. And of course I knew that it would likely be in my... Um, interest area because my main interest is the 1930s of the Soviet Union. Okay, here it is. And the first one I can see is Stalin Speaks for Peace. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah. Stalin Speaks for Peace. It's very, very short, it looks like. <clears throat> Interview, February 16th, 1951. Full text of Premier Stalin's. And this is likely from, is it International Pamphlets? Nope, the National Council of American Soviet Friendship. They produced a lot. So this is a speech, all right. Next is Stalin Speaks to the World. One cent it was originally, in what year? Okay, this looks like it's directly after World War II. All right, so 1940s. Interesting. Next is, ah! This is the H.G. Wells interview, Marxism versus Liberalism, an interview. So this will be 1935, I'm pretty sure is when that interview was. Yeah, 1935. Okay, this is great. Oh, it's damaged. Uh, international Publishers. Yeah, Joseph Stalin, H.G. Wells. Really interesting interview. Highly recommend you look this up. Okay, I have many of these. Constitution. I'm assuming it's 1936. Well, it's a nice little map. Some pictures, international publishers again, 1936. And when was this printed? 1937. All right, cool. Oh, there's some pictures in here. It's a girl on a tractor. That's really nice that they put the constitution and add some photography of the people that it's um, affecting, uplifting, and talking about. That's a really nice idea. Um, so not only are you understanding the changes in law and legislation and all of that, you're also seeing who it's affecting. And I just think that's a really humanizing way to go about it. Ah, I know her. I just posted a whole thread on uh, Twitter about her. That's amazing. One of the world's first uh, sea captains on a uh, ocean going vessel. She's amazing. She's also very, very handsome. Um, good for her. Sweet! Okay, oh, now it's Behind the Polish-Soviet Break uh, by Alan Brody. Publication of Soviet Russia Today magazine. I mean, we can guess, but I wanted to see if it has the publishing date. They don't always. It likely came with a magazine, so you would know the date of this actual publication by the magazine it came with. Um, but yeah. I actually like the cover of this one. The Soviets and the Individual, Joseph Stalin. Again, international publishers, this was two cents. Let's see, what year was this? 1935. Nice. Okay, there's two more. This is My Social Credo by J.P. Maximov. Oh, 70s, 1970s. Grigory Maximov was one of the most clear-thinking figures in the Russian anarchist movement, and the present essay constitutes a brief but forceful statement of his social views. Um, that's why I'm not familiar with him. All right. Interesting. And lastly, report of the CIO delegation to the Soviet Union. 
The victory of the United Nations over the military power of fascism opened up prospects of a new era of international understanding, democratic progress, and world peace and prosperity. The Congress of Industrial Organizations, the vanguard of American labor, rallied behind the plans of President Roosevelt and other leaders of the United Nations to continue this wartime unity into post-war period. Okay, so right after World War II, a delegation went to the Soviet Union, and this is their experience. Oh. oh, and there's photographs from their little visit. Well, this is nice. I love accounts of different American delegations going to the Soviet Union. Uh, Congress of Industrial Organizations. Their publicity department is where this is from. Interesting. Well, that's what I got in this $15 lot. Do you think it's worth it? Um, look forward to these up on my website because I'll definitely scan them.